Hello, welcome to your Articulate lecture on white blood cells and the immune system. This material will be on the first lecture exam and you will be held accountable for the material presented in this lecture. As always, if there is a question on the material I present, you should come to me and ask questions. This material is covered in your textbook in chapters 33 and 34. The main components of the immune system are lymphocytes, lymphoid tissue, and lymphoid organs such as the spleen, lymph nodes, and thymus. The immune system protects our body from foreign organisms by fighting infections and conferring immunity to disease. As with other systems we will talk about this semester, the immune system must also maintain homeostasis or have some sort of regulation between recognizing material that is self or from the body and material that is non-self or foreign. Obviously, the immune system must elicit an appropriate immune response against invading antigens. Inappropriate immune responses include the excessive onslaught of the immune response. This includes hypersensitivities, allergies, or autoimmunity. Diminished immune responses are also detrimental to the body. This type of immune response is deficient in the ability to destroy an infectious agent and includes overall immune deficiency and AIDS. It is now time to address some vocabulary. The word antigen means anything that can elicit an immune response. It can be a protein or even a polysaccharide on the surface of or released by a cell, bacterium, fungus, virus, etc. So an antigen is a substance that is recognized as foreign by the host's immune system. In this picture you see a bacterial cell and on the surface of this bacterium you will notice several antigens protruding from the cell surface. Any of these antigens can cause an immune response. Notice that antibody A is only recognizing and binding to the antigen depicted as a red triangle. Notice that antibody B recognizes and binds to the antigen depicted as a peach circle. You should realize that antibodies are specific. They can only recognize and bind to one particular antigen. Additionally, the host's immune system may not necessarily react to or recognize the entire polysaccharide or antigenic protein. Rather, the immune cells may react to only a particular site, say a certain sugar or chain of amino acids on the entire antigenic molecule. These smaller sites on the larger antigenic protein or polysaccharide are called epitopes. Now I want to define the word tolerance. If I took your cells and injected them into another person, they will likely elicit an immune response because your glycoproteins are antigenic to someone else. However, your own immune system does not react to your antigens. We say this is tolerance to self-antigens. How does this happen? Well, several ways. One, the immune cells may not express receptors to self-antigens. Two, T cells do not respond to self antigens because the thymus kills self reactive lymphocytes, or other immune cells inactivate lymphocytes that could be reactive to your own cells. Tolerance to self antigen sometimes breaks down, and this leads to autoimmune diseases, which I will discuss later. When we speak of whole blood, we are really speaking of plasma and formed elements. Formed elements are red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. The prefix leuco means white, and the suffix site means cell. So leukocyte means white blood cell. White blood cells contain nuclei and organelles, so of all the formed elements, these are the only ones that are true cells. Red blood cells lack nuclei and organelles, and platelets are only fragments of a larger cell. I will discuss platelets in more detail during our class time later on. White blood cells defend your body against foreign materials such as bacteria, viruses, or cells from another person. 
They remove toxins, waste, and they also function to remove damaged or dying cells. For example, aged red blood cells must be removed from the circulation and macrophages help do this. A typical microliter of blood contains about six to nine thousand white blood cells. Now when I say there are six to nine thousand white blood cells per microliter, I want you to understand that the white blood cells circulating in your blood only represent a fraction of the total number present in your body. White blood cells only use the circulatory system to get to their final des destination. Then they migrate out of the bloodstream and reside in the connective tissue found throughout your body. If there are six to nine thousand white blood cells per microliter, exactly how many of them are neutrophils or basophils, etc.? Well, remember 603631, and this tells you that roughly 60% of the six to nine thousand will be neutrophils, 30% will be lymphocytes, this would be both B and T cell populations together. 6% will be monocytes, 3% will be eosinophils, and 1% will be basophils. If these numbers change, it could suggest pathology. Continuing with the previous slide, when a person is suspected of having a white blood cell disorder, blood can be obtained from the patient and a blood smear prepared. From this, a differential white blood cell count can be done. Basically, all the white blood cells are counted, and a tally of how many of each type of white blood cell found is kept. Leukopenia describes an absolute decrease in white blood cell numbers. The disorder may affect any of the specific types of white blood cells, but most often it affects neutrophils, which, under normal healthy conditions, is the most abundant granulocyte. A number of conditions, including aplastic anemia and treatment with chemotherapeutic drugs and irradiation, may cause leukopenia. Idiosyncratic drug reactions may also lead to leukopenia. Idiosyncratic is a term used to describe drug reactions that are different from the effects obtained in most persons and that cannot be explained in terms of allergies. In other words, a patient reacts very badly to a particular drug with no known reason why. Although I'm sure you are hearing me say gene expression right about now. A number of drugs can cause such idios idiosyncratic reactions. Chloramphenicol, which is used as an antibiotic, is an example. Obviously, if a person has reduced white blood cells, they would be more prone to infection. Leukocytosis is a general term to describe excessive numbers of white blood cells. Leukocytosis is normal when you are fighting an infection. You have increased white blood cells, but they are normal and functional. Leukocytosis also occurs with leukemia, except that with leukemia, the excessive white blood cells are not normal nor functional. Leukemia is a word to describe uncontrolled production of white blood cells caused by a cancerous mutation of a myelogenous or lymphogenous cell. What does that mean? Remember that the hemocytoblast is a multipotent stem cell that gives birth to myelogenous daughter cells such as neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes, platelets, and basophils, or lymphogenous daughter cells such as T and B lymphocytes. Cancer-causing mutations in the myelogenous or lymphogenous cell lines cause leukemia, which is characterized by a greatly increased number of abnormal white blood cells. The first effect of leukemia is a metastatic growth of leukemic cells in abnormal areas of the body. Leukemic cells from the bone marrow may reproduce so greatly that they invade the surrounding bone, causing pain and eventually a tendency for bones to fracture easily. In other words, the rate of production of these abnormal white blood cells becomes so great that the medullary cavity within the bone expands to accommodate this rapidly dividing population of cells. Although there are greater numbers of white blood cells, they are not functional white blood cells. They are abnormal and released in a poorly differentiated state. 
Additionally, the cancerous cells within the medullary cavity consume too many nutrients, and this means that the development of other normal blood cells, for example platelets or red blood cells, as well as the normal function of other parts of the body would be impeded. Almost all types of cancer cause both anorexia, a reduction in food intake caused primarily by diminished appetite, and cachexia, a metabolic disorder of increased energy expenditure leading to weight loss greater than that caused by decreased food intake alone. In other words, the cancer cells are too metabolically active and consume too many nutrients. The immune response is divided into two functional categories, innate or nonspecific and adaptive or acquired immunity. These two types of responses will be discussed further on the following slides. Nonspecific immunity defenses means just that. These include simple barriers and generic reactions to antigens and foreign microbes. The barriers include cutaneous and mucous membranes. The secretions from these membranes can prevent the spreading of invading microbes. Mucus can trap microbes. Serosal secretions may contain lysozymes or bactericides that can destroy the microbes. Inflammation is also a nonspecific host defense. The characteristics of inflammation inclu include duller or condition of physical pain, mental anguish, or suffering from heat. It is one of the four, si four signs of inflammation. The other three characteristics are calor, which means heat, rubor, which means redness, and tumor, which means swelling. Fever is another nonspecific host defense, and this elevates metabolic rates for all cells of the body, including the activity of white blood cells. Antimicrobial substances are also nonspecific. These include complement proteins and interferons, and these will be discussed in more detail soon. Then we have the phagocytic white blood cells that are generic in their responses to invading microbes neutrophils, tissue macrophages, eosinophils, and basophils. A brief review of these, quote, nonspecific white blood cells is next. The first nonspecific white blood cell cells I want to highlight are the basophils and eosinophils. Basophils migrate to injury sites and release the contents of their granules. The granules contain histamine and heparin, among other components. Histamine is a vasodilator and increases capillary permeability. Collectively, this means the capillary will have more blood flow through it, and the capillary itself will be more leaky to allow more white blood cells to reach the tissue infection. Heparin is an anticoagulant, and this means that the blood will be less likely to clot and allows better movement of the white blood cells to the infection site. The basophils function really augments the inflammation response initiated by the mast cells. I always remember B for basophils and for begin, as in beginning the inflammatory response. Later on in the PowerPoint, you will also learn how basophils and mast cells bind to an IgE antibody antigen complex to begin an inflammatory response typically known as an allergic reaction. In contrast, eosinophils attach themselves to parasites, particularly parasitic flukes invading your GI tract, and then release hydrolytic substances and digest the parasite from the outside in. During the time of infection, the eosinophil numbers will increase. Also, eosinophils seem to play a role in preventing the excessive spreading of local inflammatory factors from mast and fat basophil cells. Clearly, if the mast cells and basophils were left unchecked, then widespread histamine and heparin release would cause excessive vasodilation. This is what happens during anaphylactic shock. In a healthy individual, the eosinophil helps temper the mast cell and basophil activity by modulating the spread of inflammatory factors, referred to as cytokines, 
to maintain homeostasis during an allergic reaction. Neutrophils are the most abundant of the circulating white blood cells. This white blood cell is extremely mobile and is the first of the traveling white blood cells in the blood to come and assist tissue macrophages fight an infection. They are excellent phagocytic cells, which means they ingest large particles or entire cells like bacteria. A tissue macrophage is a mature monocyte and a very potent phagocytic cell. It can ingest many more foreign particles than a neutrophil and it is your first line of defense against invading microbes, followed by neutrophils. The macrophage and neutrophil are considered to be nonspecific immune cells. By that I mean they do not discriminate between the type of material they ingest. They can engulf any type of bacteria, other microbes, or even dead or dying body cells. They both use opsonization to help engulf foreign material. That means when antibodies released by a mature B lymphocyte bind to a foreign particle or antigen, the antibody antigen complex can then bind to surface receptors on the neutrophil or macrophage. This basically immobilizes the antigen and affords the neutrophil and macrophage time to phagocytize the foreign particle. These cells will wrap around foreign particles, internalize those particles, and then use lysosomes to break down the particulate matter. Lysosomes are cytoplasmic vesicles that are filled with hydrolytic enzymes. In this picture, I show you an aqua blue bacterium covered with antibodies. They are shaped as upside down Y's. When a bacterium is covered with antibodies, the antibody tail can dock to a cell surface receptor called the FC receptor as it recognizes the FC region of the antibody found on the neutrophil and macrophage. This is called opsonization. And the advantage to having antibodies that help dock a bacterium to this FC receptor is that the bacterium is now unable to move away as the macrophage or neutrophil wraps itself around the bacterium to engulf it. An important difference between macrophages and neutrophils is that when the foreign particle has been broken down by the hydrolytic enzymes, the macrophage will embed some of the antigen in its cell membrane. Because of this, the macrophage acts as an antigen presenting cell, or APC, and activates T cells and B cells into action. Perhaps you need another way to wrap your mind around this. I'm sure you have encountered children wearing messy shirts. Perhaps you can identify exactly what it was that they had eaten. Maybe some ketchup from their hot dog, maybe some punch, or sticky cotton candy. Macrophages are very similar to these children. Whatever they have eaten, they display on their cell surface for other white blood cells to recognize in order to activate them.